Ladies and gentlemen, hope you had a lovely Merry Christmas. I hope you had a, a lovely Happy Holiday. If you don't know my voice by now, you know it's me, the Playmaker Darnell Silence of the Playmaker Fly Podcast. And today I am here by myself because my partner is out enjoying his holiday, his Christmas with his wife and his family. So he he was traveling, so he couldn't join us. College and NFL, because hey, college football win, bowl season, bowl games all took place. Big bowl games to take place this weekend coming up. NFL, we are in week 17. We are in the final week. There are still some playoff things that need to be solidified. We got to get into what happened in week 16. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's jump into the college football realm here. And uh, Buffalo defeated um, Charlotte in the Bahamas Bowl. Kent State, the Golden Fl- the Golden Flash, excuse me, got their first ever bowl win. Over the Aggies of Utah State. What a win. What an achievement for Kent State. First ever bowl win. Good job. They took home the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Fiasco Bowl. Great job. Great job, Kent State. Celebration Bowl. North Carolina NT took down Arkansas State. North Carolina NT wears the trophy proud. There you go. In the New Mexico Bowl, as predicted, in any case, San Diego State handled business against Central Michigan, and it wasn't even close. Moving right along here as we continue to review the bowl games. The Cure Cable down in Orlando, Florida. Shout out to the Liberty Flames. 23-16 over Jordan Southern. Liberty eight and five on the year. What a win for you guys! Shout out to Liberty. Hey, shout out to one of my pastor Cotton. Uh, you want me to talk about Liberty in basketball? I will do so, but hey, I'm shouting you up because Liberty did their thing in football in the bowl game. Shout out to Liberty. Good job. Going down to the Boca Raton Bowl, probably not probably not the most surprising one because Kent State beaten. Utah State is very surprising thus far, but the way FAU just handled, manhandled the Mustangs of SMU from the American Conference after losing Lane Careful, Kevin to Oh Miss FAU at home handled business fifty two to twenty eight on the the Cardiac Ponies. Leave, leaving them at 10 and 3. And shout out to FAU fans the season with 11 wins, 11 and 3. FAU, hey, they say, can they keep it going with a new new regime now? But hey, what a way to end the season. Good job, fellas. The Camilla Bowl, Arkansas State takes down the Panthers of Florida International University. In other words, FIU. Good job for the Weird Wolves getting that victory. Finish the season all eight and five on the season. Good job by you guys. Good job. Oh, the Las Vegas Bowl. Oh, boy, the Las Vegas Bowl. The Las Vegas Bowl. Mitchell Beatty's Motor Las Vegas Bowl. The Chris Peterson Bowl, where he at Washington was causing his last and final game with the Huskies against his former team before he came to head coach at Washington, the Boise State Broncos. And what a show, what a beatdown, whatever you want to put on it, whatever you want to call it, because the Washington Huskies with Coach Peterson's last game coaching because he's stepping down, put on a show against his former team, the Broncos of Boise State, who was ranked 19th right there, 38-7. to Yet again, the Power 5 Conference dominating a group of five teams. One of the best group of five teams they had to offer, and Washington beat them down. Shout out to Chris Peterson sending off in the right note. The New Orleans Bowl, Appalachian State took care of business of UAB 31-17. Nice job, Appalachian State finished the season off with 13-1. Great job. Let's see what they let's see where they rank that at the end of the season after all these bowl games are done. But the Mountaineers continue doing what you're doing there. 
And then defensing off the week one bowl pitch that we did between me and Dallas, UCF Knights, third straight season, 10 wins because they took down Marshall. They gave Marshall all they can handle, and Marshall couldn't respond. 48-25. Good job by you guys in the bad boy mode Gasparilla Bowl. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Now, as we're going to dive in here, we're going to, we're going to look at week two, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday is very huge. And Monday's games, shall we? So, with that being said, let's go ahead on uh, Thursday, December 26th, the day after Christmas, which it will be today on this one. Uh, the Walk Ons Independence Bowl, Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. 9 and 3 on the season from the Conference USA. I give me from the ACC 6 and 6 on the season. Down year for the Hurricane fans. The Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech, they coming. I want to see how Miami's going to look. 4 p.m. ESPN will be watching the game closely with, with all eyes attend. See how Miami's going to finish the season. Are they going to finish the season the way Washington finished the season over Boise State or will Louisiana Tech avenge Boise State in the name of the Cooper Five? Taking down the Power Five. Oh, that's something to watch for. That's something to look at. We going to see because the Bulldogs, the Bulldogs got a team. Y'all better watch out. Jamar Smith, their quarterback, throwing for 200. 2,814 yards with 17 touchdowns. They run it back. Justin, Justin um, Henderson, 166 carries, 967 yards with 15 touchdowns. Oh, they got a balanced attack. Miami better be ready. They athletes better be ready. Their athletes better be on point. Rise up and show what the state of Florida is about. Rise up, Miami. Rise up, Hurricanes. Let's go. And then the night capital Thursday for tonight, for this week's Thursday game. So it'll be Penn, the Pitt Panthers from the ACC taking on Eastern Michigan from the Mac. And uh, I'm just going to be real. If Eastern Michigan make this a game, I'm going to look at Pitt sideways. If Pitt don't beat this team by 17 points, I'm going to look at this team sideways. Eastern Michigan should not be close in this game. This game should be over by halftime. Pitt, do what you do. Handle your business, darn it. That's all I got to say on that. Handle your business. Friday's games, December 27. Let's, let's go some more ACC group of five action, shall we? Uh, North Carolina Tar is led by Mac Brown. Are going against Temple in the military boat up in Maryland. Ooh, this is going to be good. I am going to... If I didn't have to work, I would be watching this game, but I'll be at work, so I'll miss this game. But my phone will have me on alert, and I will check in from time to time see what's going on between the Tar Heels and the Owls because I got a feeling this is going to be a very good game. This going to be a good one to watch, people. Watch this game. I think I'm going to go Temple. I'm sorry. I think Temple, Temple got one more upset in them this season. And it's going to have to come at the hands of Matt Brown. I'm sorry. But I'm going to go with Temple on that one. I'm sorry. Now let's jump into Big Ten ACC action here. Because, you know, ACC, they could actually round up with 10 teams in. Five of them we're going to talk about. We already talked about three of them. Here's the fourth one right here. And uh, look at here. Michigan State Spartans from the Big Ten. Against the Wake Forest, Demi Dinkins, so they... And in the New Orleans Pinstripe Bowl, that will be taking place at Yankee Stadium. Up there in New York, in the Bronx. Look, Michigan is a is a traditional Big Ten team where uh they're going to run the ball, they're going to be physical with you, and they're going to try to punch you in your mouth. Wait for us on the other hand, you know, they can run. They're going to do some spread and stuff. They're going to throw the ball around. So it's going to be interesting to see leaning towards Wake Forest, but after sitting back and thinking about it, Mike, Dan, Mike D'Antonio, uh, oh, man. Um, not Mike D'Antonio, Mark D'Antonio. I'm sorry, coach. Forgive me. I might, I might flip my pick to Michigan State, man. 
I got to Friday. I might flip my pick right now. It's waiting for us. I might flip that pick to Michigan State because I'm I'm thinking the the physical nature and the style of the big team that Michigan State is going to bring to this table. It might do some damage to wait for us. I'm I'm thinking on that one though. No. All right, we get our first Big Twelve and ACC teams, and they go at each other for the. Academy Sports and Outdoors, Texas Bowl in Houston, Texas. The 25th ranked Capitals of Oklahoma State against Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M Maggie. Ooh, Mike Grundy, Jimbo Fisher, Chubba Hubbard, Kellen Mond. Oh, man, this is going to be a good one. Oh, 645, I will be off work in time for this one, and I will be all glued to this one. Academy, I still spoil. I'm watching this game. Right now, I'm going Texas a and I believe Jimbo Fisher might have something up his sleeve that Mike Grunny ain't ready for. I think... I think Mike Grunny going to bring man, Trevor Herbert, man. He wasn't even at New York, but he should have been at New York. But we ain't going to get into that. But anyway, Trevor Herbert, one of, the, one of the best running backs of the year this season. Nothing can't be taken away from him. But I'm going to roll with Jimbo Fisher. I'm going to roll with the Aggies of Texas a and I'm going to roll with the Southeastern Conference in that one. All right. 8 p.m. FS1, the San Diego Credit Union pulled out. San Diego, California, where the... The, the Trojans of USC from the Pac-12 will take on the Iowa Hawkeyes of the Big Ten. We have a Pac-12 Big Ten matchup here. And uh, the way that I see it is the spread style offense of USC against the run physical nature. Three, three, three yards in a cloud of dust of the Iowa Hawkeyes smashing at each other. And you know... uh. I'm not gonna lie. This offense, this offense of USC worries me because I'm picking Iowa, but this spread offense worries me because USC is known to have athletes. It's always known to have athletes, so I don't. I, don't, I I'm a little fearful here. I'm a little fearful here, but I'm gonna roll with the Iowa. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll with the ground and pounding team right here, and see how they how they work and see and see if. If USC still dealing with a lot of injuries, because they had a lot of injuries throughout the season, so they still could be injured going into this game. So I'm gonna go with the Hawkeyes in this one. I, I don't see, I don't see why not. How about the nightcap for Friday's games? The cheese and four, Phoenix, Arizona. Talking about two, talking about the same type of styles that I just mentioned. The Air Force Falcons 10 and 2 on the season from the Mountain West, taking on Washington State Cougars. 6 and 6 from the Pac 12 is run the ball down your throat versus passing the ball all over your head. It's Falcons of a ground attack, and it's the Cougars of the air attack. Kind of, yeah, it sounds strange because Falcon. Because Falcons fly and Cougars run, so but it's the opposite. The Falcons like to run and the Cougars like to pass it. Hey, it is what it is. What can I say? Uh, do uh, Anthony Gordon over 5,000 yards passing, 45 touchdowns? Dude, get up out of here. Get up. This man threw for over 5,000 yards, but you only got a six and six record with 45 touchdown passes. What is going on here? Oh, yeah, y'all don't have a defense. Which means the Air Force is going to run the ball, control the clock, 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 run the ball, and control the clock. Y'all get the point. Air Force. And now we get to the big day. Saturday, December 28th. Oh, where the big boys come to play at now. It's time for the big boys to come and rise up and show the world what they're about. And we're going to get you started 12 p.m. noon time. Camping Whirlpool. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame ranked 15. 10 and 2 on the season independent against the Cyclones of Iowa State. 7 and 5 on the Big 12. I am picking Notre Dame. And I'm picking Notre Dame. I don't think, I don't, it might be close in the first half, but I think the second half, Notre Dame just pulled away. I think Notre Dame probably win this by like 10, 10 to 14 points, you know. I don't think Iowa State has the horse, horsepower to keep up with them for for 16 minutes. I just Probably 30 minutes, but I don't think 60. So I'm going to choose Notre Dame fighting Irish in that one. 
Hear he, hear he. Also at noon Eastern time, it's the first New Year's Six bowl game of the year. And it comes from Arlington, Texas, the home of the Dallas Cowboys, in which I will get into them later on in the podcast when I go to the NFL side. Because I ain't Penn State and the Lions 10-2 on the season from the Big Ten taking on the American champion, the the, the the champion of the group of five when it comes to this podcast, the Playmakers Blog Podcast, and the one who got the New Year's Six bid, the Tigers of Memphis, ranked 17 in the country. I thought long and hard about this. Oh, I wish that was what he had to tell me how he felt about this, but I thought long and hard about this. You know, Penn State, they can run it, they can pass it. So can Memphis too, though. So... Uh, uh, USC had they. I mean, UCF had their chance last year against LSU. They came up short. Uh, I'm picking Penn State. I think Memphis is gonna feel the same thing. They're gonna come up short, and yet another power five gets another win of a group of five, keeping them at bay of possibly making a run in a case for a playoff for making the playoffs. But, Meant that y'all had a great season, man. Y'all done great things, but I just got a feeling Penn State is going to win this game. I just got that feeling. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. And then we get to the playoff action. 4 p.m. is the time. Mercedes-Benz Stadium, Atlanta, Georgia, ATL is the place to be, and it's the Oklahoma Sooners, ranked fourth in the country from the Big 12, led by Jalen Hurts and Coach Lane Kiffin against, not Lane Kiffin, I am so sorry, Lincoln Riley, Lincoln Riley, Lincoln Riley, I owe you, I owe you more respect than that, I am so sorry. Lincoln Riley is leading the Sooners against the number one team in the country. The Heisman Trophy runner and Joe Burrow and Ogeron head and the LSU Tigers. The Tigers are back in the city, in the stadium, where they finished off the Georgia Bulldogs and allowed Oklahoma to get into the playoffs. This is the place of where that took place. Joe Burrow has won the Heisman and deservedly so. LSU is the number one ranked team in the country, and deservingly so. LSU will win this game. But Dallas picked, he texted me earlier, and he picked Oklahoma. He picked the upset. LSU is a 13 and a half favorite. And Dallas picked the upset. He picked Oklahoma. I'm kind of surprised. Maybe later on he probably changed his pick because, you know, he got to Saturday with his uh, Bow Mania on ESPN. So, uh, yeah, very surprising there, my friend, my brother. But I got LSU. He taking Oklahoma. That's the 4 p.m. game. Then uh, 8 p.m. We going all the way from the ATL. We going all the way to Glendale, Arizona. PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. The number two ranked team in the country. Probably the most complete team in the country. Led by Justin Fields. Coach Ryan Day. And, uh, and the other Heisman Finalist Chase Young on the defensive side. The Buckeyes of Ohio State taking on the reigning, defending, undisputed national champion of the world, led by Coach Dabo Sweeney, Trevor Lawrence Sunshine, Travis Etienne, and the pursuit of receivers that they got over there in the Clemson Tigers, ladies and gentlemen. Me and Dallas are both taking the Clemson Tigers to win this game. J.K. Dobbins is a great running back. Him and Travis Easy ain't going to cancel each other out. It's going to be Trevor Lawrence versus Chase Young, and it's going to be Justin Fields against the Clemson Tigers defense. It's going to be Ryan Day versus Dabo Sweeney, and I think Dabo Sweeney is going to continue using that tape. Don't respect you guys. Y'all is the third-ranked team in the country the whole time because you almost lost the knuckle. Carolina on the road. What do you got to do to get some respect here? Beat the number two team in the country. Beat Ohio State. Beat a team that was undefeated throughout the city. Beat a team who was beating everybody by double digits. Beat a team who has scored at least 30 points in all their games. That's what you got to do. 
And I think that was going to do it. Look out, the Clemson Tigers are coming. And as we get ready to close out the college sports notice, let's go to Monday's action, December 30th. That's where we're going to get some more of these great games. First up is the first responders bowl with the West Kentucky Hilltoppers take on the Western Michigan Broncos. Mm. Think I'm going to go Western Kentucky on this one. I haven't heard much from Western Michigan, even though Western Michigan is 75, Western Kentucky 8 and 4. I like Western Michigan. I mean, I like Western Kentucky over Western Michigan. I'm just going to say it like that. Music City Bowl, Nashville, Tennessee, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State from the SEC, taking on Louisville Cardinals of the ACC. And uh, I'm going to be real honest with you. Y'all know I'm an SEC guy, sorry, Eastern Conference guy, but uh, I'm picking Louisville in this one. I'm going to take Louisville, even though Mississippi State is getting the fourth spot. I'm taking. The, I'm, I'm gonna take the upset. I'm taking Louisville to win this game. Red Box Bowl. Uh, we going to uh, eh, Santa Clara, California. Leave I stay in the home of San Francisco 49ers, and uh, it's the California Golden Bears against the Illinois Final Nine. And um, ooh, you know, Lovey Smith did something that I think they'll do when they beat Wisconsin. But uh, I'm gonna take Cal because Cal still has a defense, and they will find a way on the offense and they get it done. So I'm gonna take Cal. Yeah, I'm gonna take out. I'm gonna leave it right there and take out. And then, uh, hey, 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 it's the Capital One Orange Bowl, Miami, Florida. The 24 ranked Cavaliers of the ACC, nine and four on the year after getting the waxed and washed and drilled by the Clemson Tigers to continue to make their case that they should be respected. Now this team has a couple of weeks, three weeks to watch they self or get prepared. But uh, you in Miami, Florida, uh, you're not playing Miami. You're not playing Florida State. You're not playing UCL because they already played. You're not playing FIU because they never make a new assist game. You're not playing FAU because they never make a new assist game. So there's only one team left in the state of Florida. Them Gators from Gainesville, Florida, the Florida Gators, the ninth ranked team in the country that runner up in the ACC East. Dan Mullen, Kyle Trask, who said he's coming back for a senior season. Bronco Mendenhall, y'all had a great season. Your quarterback is good, but you ain't face a team like this. You probably haven't, isn't? But Bryce Perkins, you, you you good, homie. You good. I like your game. I like what you do. But besides Clemson, you have never seen a team like this. The Florida Gators are coming down to Miami. They're going to take over Miami, and they're going to show you why you don't play in the state of Florida against a Florida team. Just that plain and simple. Florida. Got some 14 and a half spot in Vegas. That tells you how even Vegas feels about this game. Get ready, because here come the Gators. My Gators, handle your business. Get this get this 11-2 victory, and let's move on to next season and handle business next season. Let's go, Florida. Let's do this. And that's how I'm going to end off the college football podcast of this portion of the show. When I come back from this break, we're going to get in. We're going to talk about the NFL. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? It's a long process. It's a hard, thought-out process. Yeah, I know. I was there. I was there from March of this year, thinking about how I'm going to do this, doing all my research, trying to get everything right. What platforms can we use and how we're going to record it and how we're going to make it sound good and make it all this happen. And then I came upon Anchor. The Anchor app on my phone, the easiest choice I could ever make to do a podcast. It's free to use. You don't got to pay for nothing. You can record episodes whenever you're ready. You can edit it and then you can release them when you want to. And you don't have to worry about trying to figure out how you're going to distribute it on other platforms because Anchor has partnerships with Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, CastBox, Pocket Cast, whatever you name it. Because the Playmakers by Podcast is the podcast that I use. We are on all them platforms. We are on nine platforms just by using the Anchor app. So pretty much all the questions that you have questions about about doing a podcast, go to the Anchor app or go to the Anchor website, anchor.fm.com and just search through it, ask questions. Because I tell you, a free app that does all this, there's nothing more you can ask for. 
I even got friends. They doing their podcast on the Anchor app. Faith Talk, you might have heard of it because it's very good. And it's great that it's an app like this. It's a website like this that makes it easier for people to do podcasts and do what they love best, talking about the things that they love to talk about. So give Anchor a try. See how much you like it. We'll love to hear your podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back. And, uh, hey, time to talk some NFL stuff now because, uh, hey, we are down to the final week of the season. This is it. This is week 17. We're here. We're here and ready to go. And uh, for for starters, before I even go on, shout out to Dallas Glenn. He has won the uh, NFL picks. You know, I took my chances on some on this past week, and uh, I missed. I ain't just missed. I missed badly. So uh, I took the college picks. Dallas, Dallas took the NFL picks. So, yep. Let's go ahead and make that official. Even though he's not here, we're going to go ahead and make that official. So congratulations, Dallas, on winning the NFL picks as I took the college picks. So we'll see how we do in the bowl season as, as I already got started. And we'll see how we do in the playoffs when they get started in the NFL. But... Shout out to Dallas. He won the pick. So, with that being said, uh, let's just talk about what happened in week 16. We started off on Saturday and we started off with the Houston Texans against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And uh, pretty much, Jameis being Jameis, being James, throwing four picks and uh, pretty much gave the AFC South to uh, the Houston Texans led by Deshaun Watson. So, um, what can I say? Jameis being Jameis. So that's that. I mean, hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. So then uh, we go. We go from Florida down to Temple, Temple, Florida, and we gonna move on up to, all the way up to the Foxborough, Massachusetts, where the New England Patriots and the Buffalo Bills went there, and they were like that. That game was something to behold. Josh Allen and the crew, they came in there ready to fight, ready to pounce, ready to do something that hasn't been done in in a hope. And, well, Tom Brady threw only threw for 271 yards and touchdown. Uh, Sonny Michelle almost had 100 yards rushing, risk to break some tackles and get in the end zone. And the uh, defense being a defense from New England, uh, they beat the Buffalo Bills yet again. 24-17 and, uh, for the 11th straight year. They have won the AFC East Division, which is a whole decade worth of world dominance. Do I need to say any more about this team and the dominance that they show? Because it's just ridiculous of how dominant they are. And it hurts my nerves, to say the least. But what can I say? Yeah, what can I say? So... Moving, moving along, moving along, moving along. So, uh, let's just say this. Uh, my Rams, I told y'all last week, I told y'all several weeks ago, there will be no playoffs for either team in the LA, which is the Chargers, who been eliminated, but the Rams still had a shot, even though they lost to Dallas. And I came on the podcast last week and told y'all, they won't know because they lost to Dallas because either something's going to either they're going to lose to the 49ers or Minnesota's going to be Green Bay. And uh, pretty much the 49ers beat my LA Rams when a very, very great game to watch. A game that I enjoyed very much seeing. And it was kind of hard, but you just knew you just knew at some point something was going to happen. Uh, my Ricky Taylor rap, you cannot. Be at the safety position and play outside coverage. Why? When Jalen Rins is already playing outside coverage, you just can't do that. And you did. And uh, yeah, that's a loss. That uh, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt real bad. So yeah, we 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 can't we can't let that happen. But you did, and uh, they kicked the game. Went to field. Golf played good. Twenty-seven for forty for forty-six. Three twenty. 323, two touchdowns. He did throw a pick six. But, uh, I mean, Robert Woods, eight catches, 117. Most of uh, only had 53 yards rushing in a touchdown. It was, I mean, you you just can't 
give up that kind of play. So, but they did, and they lost by three. And now the reigning defending NFC champions have been officially eliminated from the playoffs, which officially eliminates the city of Los Angeles out of playoff contention. Moving right along to Sunday's action. And then what we had on Sunday was that, uh, hey, the Baltimore Ravens clinched the one seed by getting, by beating the Cleveland Browns 31-15. to Cleveland didn't have no answer. Just go around like they did in the first meeting when they dropped 40 on them. They went from dropping like 44 points in the first meeting to only 15. Hmm. Yeah. That's pretty much what happened there. So, uh... It is what it is. That's how that went down. Number one seed, the AOC will have to go through Baltimore. Uh, New Orleans Saints went on a roll and uh, handled business against the Tennessee Titans, who were who were fighting to who was fighting to stay in the wild card, hard, but they did because well, I'm getting to next. But with that being said, Michael Thomas he broke the single season record for catches in a season with his. 146 catch that was for a touchdown, but uh, you know, can't guard Mike. The man that's the man Twitter handle, and probably the best Twitter handle that is out there because it's reality. You can't guard this man. This man runs slant routes, he catches it, he runs an in route, he catches it, he runs a dat, a drag route, he catches it, he runs a post route, he catches it, he runs a deep route, he catches it. All this man do is catch the passes, man. He can't, and he doesn't outrun nobody. He just catch, he has strong hands. He just catches everything. Like this guy can catch anything. Just amazing. Shout out to Michael Thomas. You deserve it. Hey, we had our Evan Kamara sighting who broke a forty yard touchdown run. Great to see him. Eleven carries, eighty yards, two 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 tubs, two 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 tubs on there, two 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 tubs on there. Nice to see Evan Kamara getting ready for a playoff run. So shout out to them. Shout out to them. Good good good. Uh, the reason why the Tennessee Titans are still within the playoffs right now because uh hmm, let's see. After Doug Hodges went to, after Doug Hodges threw four picks on Sunday Night Football against the Buffalo Bills, he decided to throw two more against the New York Jets out of all teams. Uh, Mason Rudolph comes in, uh, he does his thing, he gets the Pittsburgh still in the game, and uh, then gets knocked out of the game with a shoulder injury. He come back to Hodges, and yeah, went back down here from there. As the New York Jets and Le'Veon Bell beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. And now Pittsburgh is in the outside looking in while Tennessee holds the sixth spot for right now. Go figure. So, uh, shout out to Cincinnati. They clinched the number one seed. They clinched the number one speak for the draft. They had the top spot. They will be picking first in the draft. Shout out to y'all to losing to Miami in a shootout game. Moving down. Uh, uh, the, uh, the Seattle Seahawks have a uh, loss to the Arizona Cardinals. 27-13 at home, by the way. And uh, do because uh, CJ Prosite was got injured and didn't return. And then, more, more importantly, Chris Carson got injured and didn't return. And both of them were not. And both of them were joined, were joined with Sean Penny on the injury reserve list and are done for the season. Three running backs, three season injuries, and uh, yeah. But on the right side, Robert Turbin was signed was signed back with the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, and by the way, um, this this is this is somebody called Beast Mode is back in Seattle. Marshawn Lynch is back. Let's see how this goes. Beast Mode is back. Robert Turbin is back. Oh, we gonna see how this goes. We are going to see how this goes. So, with that, moving right along and. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs had a best one against the Chicago Bears up in Soldier Field at uh on Sunday Night Football. Green Bay Packers led by Aaron Rodgers. Mainly, you can say led by Aaron Rodgers, but it was the defense on this day. The press, the, the Smith boys getting their job done, especially uh Zendari Smith doing what they do in Kirk Cousins. Being Kirk Cousins going 0 and 9 on Monday Night Football, and it's like 4 and 24 against. Teams with a winning record. So, yeah, Kirk Cousins being Kirk Cousins, the Packers D line getting off, and the Green Bay Packers have won the NFC North. Shout out to y'all. And then we get to the heart of the matter here. We asked this for weeks and weeks and weeks. And what happens always happens. What can go wrong will go wrong. As Stephen A. say, 
Just wait. They will not let you down. And guess what? They came right on time. Days before, just a few days before Christmas, all you got to do is beat your division, your art division rivals in their backyard, and you win the NFC East. But guess what? That Prescott has an ACL shoulder injury. Nah, he's good. He's going to play. Okay, okay. We got that. Uh, No Alshon Jeffrey. Uh, No Nelson Aguilar. Uh, No left tackle. No this person. No Deshaun Jackson. No that. No this. No that. No Jordan Howard. The most beaten up team in the NFL is the Philadelphia Eagles. And guess what? The Philadelphia Eagles at home at at Lincoln Financial Field beat the Dallas Cowboys 17-9. (laughs) 17-9. How about them Cowboys? Carson Wentz. 31 for 40, 319 in a touchdown. And that's mostly without Zachers, who got hit in the ribs and was out for a good little minute of that game before he came back and he still didn't do nothing. Dallas Carter, uh, Greg Ward Jr., Miles Sanders, who's like a breakout right now. 20 carries, 79 yards, and one touchdown. Now you didn't mention what he did in the passing game. That Prescott, 265, no touchdowns. Zeke Elliott. Where you at? Tony Pollard, where you at? Michael Gallup, you just drop touchdown passes. That's all you do. Matter of fact, you just don't drop touchdown passes. You drop passes anyway. That is all you do. Despite you having five catches for 98 yards. You should have six. You should have eight catches for over 100 yards and two touchdowns. But you drop both of them. Amari Cooper, not healthy. Jason Garrett, still the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. I don't know what to tell you. Cowboy friends, I don't know what to tell you. I don't. I don't. I really don't. This is just it's just mind blocking. Like, really. This is this is what? This is this is this is what it is. I don't know. Jason Jason Gary might as well be fired. I don't know when, but he need to be fired. Like, like this the the Marcus Long said best. Talented team with no direction. What does that tell you? A talented team with no direction. What? What is this? What are we talking about here? This team is so talented, but it has no direction. What kind of mess is this? Don't make sense whatsoever. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. Uh, another news: uh, JJ Walker is working his way back to make this run for the Houston Texans as they prepare for the playoffs. And um, yo, we got we got a lot going on here because uh, week seventeen, man, uh, it's going down. Everything. Only thing that's f- officially locked up the road to the Super Bowl and LC is going through Baltimore. New England won the East, but they haven't clinched the first round by. Kansas City won the West, but they still fighting for a first round by. Houston is the is the LC South champs, and they still fighting for seeding. Uh, Buffalo is locked into the fifth seed. No matter what, there's no there's no moving for them. So they on the road. So it, they looking at you to see they're gonna go to Houston or they're gonna go to Kansas City or whatnot and all that mess. And uh, you got the Titans and the Steelers fighting for the last for the last spot. Hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> and the NFC side, Green Bay locked up the NFC North. The Saints locked up the NFC South. Minnesota clinched the clinched clinched the. Clinch the sixth spot, so they they they'll be standing right there. Pretty much, home field advantage is not locked up. First round body ain't even locked up. Seattle and San Fran, they gonna go ahead and see who gonna win in this, the NFC West. And then you got San Fran, Green Bay, New Orleans, Seattle, all fighting for the number one seed with the Philadelphia Eagles in the lead of the NFC East. So at the least, as of right now, Minnesota Vikings will be trying to Philly. Unless Philly lose, loses to the Giants and Dallas Cowboys beat the Redskins. This is this is what we're dealing with in Week 17, people. This is what we're dealing with. So, it, I, I, don't, I don't know. This is, this is crazy. This is legit crazy stuff that I'm seeing right here. So, this, this sitting here and it's like, yo, no matter what, we know the participants 
for the most part in the playoffs. Whether it's seeding wise in the AFC or is this does Philly want to keep the East or do they want to give it back to Dallas? That's pretty much the question in the NFC. And where the Super Bowl is going to go through in the NFC. So that's what we're looking at here. So, so let's look at week 17 while we're here and while we get ready to call this call this a call this a wrap and stuff like that. Let's go to week 17 here. All right, so week 17 we have Green Bay's at Detroit. I like Green Bay. Detroit, they they play tough. They play they play tough as they can. But I like I like Green Bay. The Chargers are going to Kansas City. I like Kansas City in that game. It is what it is. We got the Chicago Bears are going to Minnesota. I think Minnesota will bounce back in this one. Even though, yeah, Mister Trubisky trying to prove a point against Patrick Mahomes and it didn't work. So yeah, we'll see how Matt Nagy and Mister Trubisky work out on that one. And if both keep their jobs or one of them keep their jobs or we'll see. Miami will lose at New England. Just, just about, even though Ryan Fitzpatrick is just throwing touchdown passes and Miami keeps on winning. But uh yeah. New England's finding their stride. A loss to Miami, however, and things get interesting. But yeah, I don't see I don't see Miami winning. New Orleans should take care of business against the weird grill leg. Carolina, even though Christian McCaffrey, that dude is awesome. He's doing all this stuff, but he's on a losing team, and it's it's shameful. It's it's it is very shameful. Uh, Washington is at the Cowboys. I don't think they're gonna have to win Haskins, and if they do, it's gonna be a hopper to win Haskins. So I'm gonna pick the Cowboys to win that one. Uh, let's see what else is what else is important. Oh, the Philadelphia Eagles are going to the Melon to take on Daniel Jones, Saquon Barker, and the New York Giants. Oof. Eesh. Uh, I picked Philly to win the East, so my best bet is to pick Philly to beat the Giants. But anything can happen at this freaking place between these two teams at the Metal Lines. Good crisis. I'm going to take Philly, though. I'm going to take Philly. Philly's going to win the East. Philly's winning in the East, and the Cowboys going to miss the playoffs. So, oh, yeah, I'm going to go with that. Pittsburgh says are at the bottom of the Ravens. No Lamar Jackson. No Mark Ingram. I think I'm going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers in this one. I'm going to roll with the Pittsburgh Steelers because, yeah, they need this game. And, you know, Baltimore Ravens are left up everything. So, what's the point of them playing anybody? They, they can take a two-week vacation they want to. And have fun. All right. Tennessee Titans at the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans are like our two birds with one stone. Deshaun Watson and these boys are finna take out Tennessee. They're going to try to improve their playoff seating at the same time and allowing Pittsburgh to get in. Pittsburgh is in. Tennessee is out. There you go. And then the night count, the battle for the A, for the NFC West crown. Century Link Field, Seattle, Washington, the 12s. As the 49ers led by Jimmy Garoppolo in that defensive back. And at the fifth front of the 49ers, take on the newly ran night of Robert Turbin, Marshawn Lynch, led by Russell Wilson, P. Carey, and the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, boy, these injuries, these injuries. These injuries to running back positions, even though they got Marshawn Lynch back and Robert Turbin back, I'm going to have to go ahead and pick the 49ers in this one. The 49ers will not only win the NFC, West, they will also clinch whole field advantage throughout the playoffs, which is not a big deal to me because I think New Orleans can go in there and win. I think uh, Seattle can go in there. That's Seattle did it before. I can think. I mean, I think uh, Green Bay will like to get a reshot at them after they beat them that they took. I mean, New Orleans can go there and win. I mean, it is what it is, but you know. Those are those injuries. Those are some those are some key injuries, man. We don't know how Turbin looks. We don't know how Marshawn Lynch looks. But uh, hey, I'm gonna take the 49ers, and the 49ers gonna get the home field advantage. So, so I'm picking the road through the Super Bowl. It's gonna go through MET Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland, and Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. So there you go. So when Dallas comes back and we talk, get ready for playoff talk, we'll see if everything I said here came to fruition. So. With that being said, thank you guys for joining me on today. Talking football, college bowl games, NFL Week 17. Appreciate your love. Appreciate all the support that you have given this podcast. Not only myself, but Dallas throughout these uh, two se- two seasons of talking 
football with y'all and uh looking forward to continue to talk some more football as uh we get ready for the new year. Uh, like I said, hope y'all enjoyed y'all Christmas holidays. Happy holidays to everybody out there. Hope you enjoyed your Christmas. Uh, you already know Donna the Playmaker Silence on Facebook, D20 Playmaker on Twitter, uh, the D Playmakers Dub on Twitter for the Playmakers Blog, Twitter, the Playmakers Blog for Facebook, you know, hey, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, Castbox, Breaker. We just got we just got put on Overcast. We're on iHeartRadio. Uh, any platform that you can listen to for podcast, you can catch us and uh, we are on First Radio, a new time radio station down in New Orleans. It came up, dude, talked to dude. We got you we're, we're on it. Catch us on that Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, we also in a, we also partnering with the uh, Race to Flat Production, RTF Productions. Shout out to them. Uh, you can want to hear podcasts on, from those guys. And you can do so with them too as well. So y'all continue to support us, man. Leave us reviews on any platform that you want. Like us, follow us. You know, interact with us. We're not hard to find. We never be hard to find. We love and acting with y'all and stuff like that. And uh, hey, we're getting ready for the new year. Enjoy your Christmas. We'll be back to talk to y'all before the new year. So y'all got two more episodes of us before the new year hit, and we we gonna get it wrapped up and running for the Warrior Rumble. Get road of match range against Brasman. And we're gonna talk playoffs and all this other stuff. So until then, enjoy the rest of y'all week.